Hello everyone. Um, I'm doing a video on polygamy. I've been praying about polygamy for like two months now. Um, not because I was unsure of things, but just because I was trying to understand a couple scriptures um, that speak about having one wife and people are using that and saying, see, that must mean they had many wives if this one's saying you should only have one. And um, also, you know, just someone has asked me to really seek and ask the Lord about things. So I've been doing that. Um, now I have got a lot of truth and revelation and wisdom on the matter after seeking for a couple months. So I'm going to share that. Uh, my first question is, what is the wisdom behind polygamy? If it is God's will, um, a commandment or God's will to practice polygamy, what is the wisdom? Why? Uh, so that's what I've been seeking about. And so far, I, ha I have not found any. Like, there's no wisdom of why this is the will of God. I'll explain. Obviously, we know that when God gives us commandments, laws, instructions, it's because he knows better, he knows what's good, and um, they're protective. So obviously, don't commit fornication. What's the wisdom in that? Well, why is it wise? Because it protects you from diseases. It protects you from extra heartbreak. protects you from having children before that you really wanted to, the time that you wanted to. Um, having getting pregnant with multiple different men, that's wisdom. Don't fornicate because blah, 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 blah. And wait till you're married so you can avoid all these things. So um, with polygamy, what's the wisdom? How is it good? The only thing that I have found through research and just discussion, uh, which is, okay, if a husband has many wives, then they can become sisters. Sister wives is what they call it. That means there's more help around the house, more help with the kids. Not You don't have to do as much cooking, cleaning, you know, because you have a lot of help. Okay, that's great. You know, that's, that's very nice. But you can do that without having multiple wives. You can do that without committing polygamy. There's nannies, there's friends, there's all types of setups where God can make that happen without you having to just go marry a bunch of women uh, in order to just have extra help around the house. Uh, now maybe some women want to just be taken care of and they don't care. People will say that. It's just not wisdom. Also, I want to know all these people who um, are saying, you know, polygamy is of the Lord. Have you been in this situation? Have you researched it? Have you heard testimonies from people who have lived in it? Uh, that's something important to do to get an understanding. Because obviously if you're not in it, you can't completely understand it. Unless supernaturally you do. So I did some researching and um, there are some women who were perfectly fine with it. But just because someone's fine with something doesn't mean that it's right. Uh, there were many, many testimonies of women who were trying to escape. They were saying that um, their husband, uh, I think, had five wives. This one person I was listening to. No, it was ten. And she was the last and the youngest and the prettiest. And she said she got to see her husband more than the others, which was uh, twice a month. Something like that. That's nothing, you guys. How is a man who has five wives, supposed to spend time, put in emotional, spiritual, physical time on his wife. You can't. Like you just can't do that. How is a man supposed to fulfill his position of leader uh, and emotionally even, emotionally be there for his children if he has five wives with five children per wife? Those children need to see their father figure. 
if dad is only at the house once a month, once a week, that's what they're going to see God as. Oh, God's not around that much. God's not available that much because he's got to take care of all these other wives. No. Okay, and then the children. I listened to some children's testimonies. It was extremely heartbreaking. I, I actually did break down and cry a few times. They said that they saw their dad, um, some of them, do you remember there's many testimonies, once a month. And the one time was either when it was time for the wife to get pregnant again, or it was time to, for him to sign a birth certificate. So getting pregnant or giving birth. Um, there's a man out there named Warren Jeffs who believes in polygamy and he has 80 wives. And some of the children never see their dad. This is, this is just not wisdom. The Lord is, is truly about love, showing that he's there for people. Uh, the father figure in someone's life is extremely important. Okay. Um, also, there are some testimonies where there was a guy I, I watched on, on YouTube who had three wives. And he was, uh, he was trying to do the best he could. Like He, he seemed like a, a, a genuine guy. He was a Muslim and he had three wives and he had specific days. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday was for wife number one. Thursday, Friday, wife number two. Saturday, Sunday, wife number three. Okay, this already sounds crazy and confusing. This is, this is so much uh, responsibility, thought. Like, it's not freedom either. It's not freedom because you have to do this and this and this. There's never like a time where like, oh no, I got to get up and go see my other wife real quick. She's in the hospital. Oh no, my other wife's in the hospital now. I got to go, you know, just think, think of the details that would be involved with polygamous relationships. Think of the strife, the jealousy. Oh, well, I'd really like to be with my husband tonight, but I can't because he's with Shonda. Oh, but I'll get to see him on Wednesday. I'll make sure the bed's nice. And also, how do you consider this clean, like, and not defiled, if you're, like, waiting for your husband on Wednesday after he got back from your other wife's house on Tuesday, who just, uh, with her, and now he's going to come over and, uh, with you? Do you consider that sexual relation clean just because you slap a title of marriage upon it? Oh, we're married, so our sexual relations, it makes it clean. I'm not defiled. I'm not going to get diseases. If, just because you put the word marriage on it does not holify and sanctify your many marriages. Okay. Anyways, um, one more testimony. There was this testimony of this woman who was really heartbroken. Um, she's like, well, like, all I do is cook and clean. And when my husband gets here, we get to spend a couple hours before he's got back go got to go back and work in order to provide for all of us wives. He needs money to provide, support all these wives. So he's either working all the time or with X, Y, and Z wife. So she was heartbroken and she was seeking the Lord and said, God, if, if polygamy is of you, fine, I'll stay in it. I, I need to really know. I never read that. I never read what we believe. I, I was in ignorance. What is the truth? So she started reading things and, and coming across things. And she stumbled upon some prophecy where the Lord was saying something like, uh, he hears the, the cries of his daughters about their broken, tender hearts being broken due to the wickedness of their husbands. And it, and he said that his people should not do of that of which is of the old. And when she read this, she knew polygamy was not from the Lord because in above the scripture, it was talking about whoredoms. The, the, due to the wickedness and the whoredoms uh, of men, of the husbands. You guys, all polygamy is, is just, it's a license to fulfill your lust. It's excess. Having multiple wives is excess. Excess is lust. Lust is sin. It's not from the Lord, guys. It's not. And so, um, there's, there's just no wisdom in it. And the Lord's commandments and will is full of wisdom, protection, safety, sincerity, time. That's, that's what Jesus Christ is about.
Um, so the other thing was, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to take, make sure I go over my notes. I don't want to make this a long video. Um, what else was there? Oh yeah, that was it. Thank you, Jesus. I understand that this this part is a is a main deal for people that I'm about to say. Someone might say, "Okay, well, what do you do um if someone tries to come to they come to the knowledge of, look, man, you know, we're actually only supposed to have one wife now. This is the way of the Lord, this is the New Testament, one wife. And they're Muslim and they have 15 wives." They say, what do you, what do you expect that dude to do? Just drop off 15 wives or 14 wives and go back to the first one that he married. That would be considered his real wife. Since the others would be adultery. Well, that could very well be the case, but that person needs to seek the Lord, hear from his voice and do what Jesus Christ says. We can't tell someone, yeah, you need to leave all your husbands, all your wives. At this very moment. To me, that doesn't sound like wisdom. Jesus is about wisdom. So if he's going to tell someone to do that, he's going to do it in a wise manner. And you're going to say, well, 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 this guy, I mean, he has um, kids with every wife. He has a car with every wife. He has a house with every wife. Like, that's terrible. That would be terrible. You know, I, I agree that that would be that would be very dramatic. But you know what? Sin comes with a lot of baggage and, and stuff that we have to forsake. Stuff that we got ourselves into that we now have to repent of and come out of. This is no different than divorce and remarriage. If a woman, uh, you know, remarries and her husband's still alive, she's she's got to come to the truth of, hey, you're actually still married to your first husband till death do us part. She has to leave that relationship that she's with it, this man. Oh, no, but I have kids and, and I'm happy and I have a family now. It's like, well, yeah, you have that now. You chose that, but that wasn't the right thing. That wasn't the will of God. So you have to forsake it. It's no different for polygamy. You might end up having to leave 14 wives. Um, Jesus might say, you know, I still want you to take care of them, but you need to be faithful to your first wife. You know, th this, this is hard stuff. This is confusing stuff that um, can come upon you through sin. So... Yeah, Jesus could very well tell someone to do that. But if anyone tries to tell someone what to do, uh, it, 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 you know, it's dangerous. We can only know what sin is and what sin is not, and then hear from the word, hear from the word of God, Jesus Christ. Hear what He tells you to do about your sin. And that's my um, recommendation or suggestion for anyone who is living in polygamy to just really seek the Lord about what you're supposed to do to um get out of that and understand you know the lord's heart well pretty sure that was everything i'm just gonna sit here for a second in case there was anything else i'm not going into doctrine i know a lot of scriptures and stuff but I'm, that's not my job um someone else can go into doctrine regarding this stuff but uh I just want you to know if you are in polygamy and you're a woman uh, and you want out, like the Lord is on your side. He will help you. He will He will show you the truth and he will heal your heart from any wounds that you have from wishing you could see your husband, but he's with Rachel this day. He, he will heal you. And he, he, he doesn't see you just out there just working uh, for someone who doesn't care for you. And if you're a man who's in polygamy and you want out too, you're tired of it, you were taught that this is the way, he can get you out too. And I know it's going to be rough, guys, but it, it will be so much better when you're at peace with the truth. Huh. God bless you all.